Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we officially start our Armory 3D tutorial series. Now we're going to look today at, well, getting started. We're going to combine uh, two of the existing tutorials. We're going to do installation and getting started all in one. So basically we're going to download, install Armory 3D, show you how to do the setup process, show you how you run it, and then we're going to kind of walk through basically creating your first game and stopping there. Um, now if you've never heard of it, Armory 3D is a recently released for everybody, completely free, open source blender powered game engine that's capable of targeting a ton of different platforms behind the scenes it is using the hackspace programming language um, if you're interested in learning a bit more about armory 3d and what it brings to the table i have an introduction guide i will link that down below on the topic of links down below i am also doing a text-based tutorial series on Armory 3D. Uh, in fact, there's already a couple tutorials on there right now. And today we're going to basically do this one and this one. Oh, sorry. This one and this one in this video today. So we're going to cover the installation, getting started. But as you see, we're going to eventually get into scripting, input, music, playback, and that kind of stuff. And then on and on from there. If you have a specific topic you want to see covered, do let me know and I will do my best to cover it, uh, at least if it's possible. Also, as you'll notice, there is this text-based series. I will throw that link down below inside of each video. All right, without further ado, let's get things going. Now, in order to download and get Armory 3D, we obviously need to go to Armory 3D's website. It is available at armory3d.org. Uh, head on over to the download link available right here. Uh, and then we just go ahead to the download now link right here. Select no thanks, take me to downloads. And then there's a bit of a decision you're going to have to make here. Now, there are a couple of different versions. Obviously, it depends on which platform you're running on. There are binaries available for Windows 64-bit, Linux 64-bit, and Mac. Now, what you'll notice here is there are two sets of each file. You've got a B27 and a B28. That stands for Blender version. So B2.8 is the newest developmental, heavily experimental version of Blender. It is quite extensively different than Blender 27, and it's really really not stable yet. So it's not really ready for prime time. So I am using Blender 2.7 for this tutorial series. Now, if you need to get um, the other version, or if you want to walk on the wild side, you can try the Blender 2.8 version, but you're going to notice differences between this tutorial series and Blender 2.8. Now, once Blender 2.8 is a little bit more mature, I will probably do an updated tutorial version on it. Now, another thing to notice here is there's also revisions here. So you want to get the most recent. Uh, at this point, they've deleted all the A's. So all you've got is the 4B, but watch out. In the future, there might be a 4C. Um, so when you do the download, make sure that the, the last letter here is the most recent version. And then when you've got the version you want, just go ahead and click download. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Windows version is a uh, 272 megabyte install. And that's because there's a lot of stuff included in there. There is also a full code editor based off Visual Studio Code, as well as a full install of Blender 2.7 pre-configured for you. Uh, so let that go ahead and download. See how long this is going to take. It's already done, so not so bad. And then when it's downloaded, what you want to do is go ahead and just open this file. Now, unfortunately, um, there's a whole lot in this file, um, so it can actually take some time for Windows to open this up. I don't know why Windows does such a bad job on compressed zip files that contain thousands upon thousands of files, but they do. Um, so I'm just going to pause this while it opens up. And so in your end, do expect this process to be slower than you would think. It's just because there are so many files included in that archive. So have some patience when you do this. Okay, so now you see it's got a single directory inside of it. We're just going to want to go ahead and right click copy that guy. Again, super slow because of the size of the archive. <sighs> I'm literally, I right clicked and now we're waiting. And this isn't on Armory. This is 100% a Windows issue. So on the Mac OS or Linux OS, hopefully you don't have this glitch. Uh, so once you've got it, just basically copy it to some place on your hard drive. I'm going to drop mine into the dev folder available right here. And I actually already have one there. Um, so let me just... We'll paste that guy in and then once again this is going to take a long time because as you see there are a ton of files in there and it's not um it's not really well elegantly handled by windows so i'm going to pause while this happens this could take a couple of minutes for us to run and i'll be back as soon as that copy is done 
Now, another thing to be aware of while this is doing this copy is I should point out when you are on a Windows machine, there are a lot of files and subfiles and subdirectories within this archive. And what you're going to want to do is make sure that you install it close to the drive root. So you don't want to put it in C colon slash, um, you know, my development project slash some other folder slash another folder, some other folder, because there is actually a hard file length limit that messes with Blender. So you kind of want to make sure that the um, total file path within your directory doesn't get too long. So in my case, I'm installing under C colon slash dev. And again, if your tree name is a little bit too deep, you can actually get into problems here. So don't install it too far into your file system, if that makes sense. All right, back to pausing. Okay, so the install is finally done copying. We're gonna go into the Armory directory. And you'll notice Armory is actually just implemented as a version of Blender. Now, if you're like me and you have at least one or more versions of Blender already installed, but you wanna get this guy pinned to your, short, um, to your start menu or another shortcut, what I would recommend doing is just renaming it like so, and then you can pin it like so, and you will find in your start, you can now have Blender and Armory side by side without being confused. Now, just go ahead and load that up. It is a typical install of Blender that has been pre-configured to work with Armory. Here we go. So you'll see here, most of the Armory implementation is over here. Now, if you are new to Blender, I just put up a video, a Blender crash course. It basically will teach you how to navigate around Blender and teach you just the basics, just what you need to go to get around the Blender user interface. I will link that down below as well. So if you need to figure out your way around Blender, I do recommend checking that out. So you'll see the majority of Armory is actually implemented as panels within the Blender interface. So here we are in the render interface and the most of it is available right down here. Now, when you're creating your first project, um, you're gonna wanna do a couple things in order. First off, you need to set yourself to be in cycles mode, uh, or you will get problems later on down the road. Next up, you need to save your project somewhere before you can do too much. So we'll do that right away. So we'll just save it. It just saves as a normal blend file. Um, so here I'll put it in temp, uh, create a new folder by pressing this button right here. Just name it my demo project, like so. And then name your blender file, my demo blend. All right, and we'll just save that out. So that is the first steps you need to do. The next you need to come on down here to the armory section here. So you'll notice we got a bunch of different categories here. We got armory player, exporter, project, render path, and bake. It's really this only this first one that we're interested in immediately. This would use later on when you're building it for uh, or publishing it to different platforms. But this is the one you want to deal with right now. So first thing you have to do after saving your project and switching into cycles render mode is do a quick build. If you don't do a build, you can't add uh, traits, etc., to your project. Project. And we'll look at that uh, in a little bit on in the next video when we look at the initial coding process. But you do need to go through this process first or that will not work later. Now, at this point in time, our project is built. You'll notice when you're doing the build, there's a little notice down here of what's going on. I'll do it again. So you see there is compiling. It'll tell you and notify you right there. Um, and then when you're ready to go, you can go ahead and press play. So we'll hit play now. And this will create our first project. Congratulations. You're noticing we're seeing basically one-to-one -one what is on screen. And that is how easy it is to get up and started using Armory. Now, there's a couple things we want to be aware of before we move on. First off, you can stop your project by hitting the play button. turns into a stop button. So, like so. You'll see it's stop. And then you can turn that off again that way. Um, another thing that you might want to notice here is you've got three different options for how to build. Uh, Chrome is a Hackspace virtual machine. It's probably what you should use initially while doing your development. Um, it is probably the fastest compilation time that there is as an option. But you've also got the ability to, um, to build to C++, assuming you have a C++ compiler installed on your machine. And you can also build for the web browser. So if you want to build for another one of these platforms, for example, browser, Go ahead, and the reason I didn't pick C++ is that process can take quite some time. But we'll just pick for browser, and we'll go ahead and let it build behind the scenes. You see down here, once again, you can see that it's compiling. Do, do, do. And this takes a slightly little bit longer because it's um, a different build process. But here we go. Now it should be opening in a browser somewhere. Oh, it's off screen. Sorry about that. Ta-da! Now, hopefully there isn't a build error here and that's why we're not seeing things. Let 
Okay, so we have an error going on, and I'm not going to get into that. It's a WebGL error, and that's actually just because I have uh, WebGL disabled on this browser. So I'll actually show you that do things, in fact, do work. So here we are in Chrome. And there you see it running. So also do keep in mind, you need to have, when you run it in a browser like I just showed you, you do need to have WebGL2 support. And for performance reasons, I have it currently turned off in Firefox. And for some reason, it errors out right now in Microsoft Edge. So do be sure if you do a web build and there is an issue, check the developer console. Uh, it's, it's generally available in different ways, but um, there is always one somewhere available where you can see if an error occurred. Um, and you know debug accordingly but that's how easy it is to do different platform builds so let's head on back over here and we're just gonna actually don't need to stop that one and close that one down at any time um so yeah that is basically how you built your first game now in the next step we're gonna get into oops uh, we're going to get into a little bit more specifically about how to go about programming, but there's one other thing I want to show you inside of Blender right now, and that is where the console is. Now, when you start up Blender, there's a console window that can be opened in the background, and this can often be used for debugging information. I want to warn you, though, there's a detail with working with it, so you can open it up that way. So window, toggle system console, toggles it, makes it visible and not visible. And you can see here all of the various different builds. So as we were doing those builds and running it in the web browser, et cetera, it was spitting out debug information to uh, that console window. So if you have problems during your compilation or something goes wrong, the details are being printed here. So let me just go back here and I'll show you. So Chrom, and we'll do a build, and I'll just switch back over to that developer console, and there you see that the output is. Okay, so if you need to get additional information or something went wrong, the simple message down here often isn't enough. If you need more details on what's going on behind the scenes, do be sure to open up that console window. Now, my warning is this console window, if I shut it down, will shut down all of Blender. So uh, if you wanna get rid of this guy, you have to toggle it that way. If you just close it out, you are going to close out Blender. It's a mistake I have made a few thousand times already, um, and I will probably make it a few thousand times again. So that's why I'm warning you right up front. Now, that is the gist of what we're going to cover today. I'm going to show you a couple other spots where Armory is integrated. So you'll see here, if we go into the scenes view, there are also a number of different Armory settings. We'll get to those in a little bit. And also in properties. And this is where you would go to attach script to a given object. You see there's armory traits, LOD, tile sheets, and proxy. We will cover all of these things in due time. There's also some settings here under physics. So armory is tightly integrated within Blender, hidden within the Blender interface. And as we use each of these pieces, I will demonstrate them to you in a bit more detail. The one last thing I'm going to show before winding up this video is the updating ability. If you go into Blender and you go into user preferences and add-ons, that is how our um, armory is tied in. And you'll see if you search for armory, you will find render armory. Scroll that down and you've got the ability down here. So you've got a bundled in SDK. If you wanna check for the newest version, you can up update the SDK via this manner. So you shouldn't have to go back and download. So if a C version is released, you shouldn't have to go and download it and do an, um, you know, a complete side-by-side -side upgrade and all that stuff. You should just be able to hit the update and it will bring down the current version. But if you do run into problems, I recommend uh, going from scratch with your install. And you see, you've got a couple of settings hidden away in here as well. And that's about it. So that's all we're going to cover today. We're getting you up and running with Armory. As you can see, from the tutorial series. The next step, we're going to get into uh, the beginnings of how you script in Armory uh, using both hacks and a node-based approach. Then we're gonna move on to show you some actual implementations via uh, input and music. Now, obviously this is the very beginning of this series. And if there's something specific that you do want to see covered, please let me know in the comments down below and I will make sure to cover it. Uh, Armory is a very interesting engine and we're literally just getting started, thus the name. Uh, hope you guys found that interesting. Please do let me know what you think of Armory and this tutorial and what you would like to see in future tutorials in the comments down below. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.